in the research for this book, I spoke to uh, uh, teenagers at Newcomers High School in New York City, which is a high school for immigrants who have just arrived. And most of the kids I talked to were going to celebrate their first Thanksgiving in just a few weeks. And their, um, their enthusiasm for the holiday was um, was very it, it affected me very profoundly. They identified with the pilgrims. Now, um, let me give you a couple of examples. One, um, a boy who identified as a Tibetan, although that country hasn't existed since China uh, uh, took took it over in 1950. Uh, he said he was a pilgrim. Why? Because his family, like the pilgrims came to America to practice their religion. In China, he said, he couldn't practice the Tibetan Buddhism of the Dalai Lama. Then a little girl spoke up and she said, oh, that's like my family. We came here from Egypt because we're cops and cops are an early uh, version of Christianity, an early sect of Christianity. So these kids uh, really got it. And um, then um, uh, a week or two later, uh, after Thanksgiving, um, I went to a Hanukkah party of, of um, a group from my uh, husband's family. And I met a kid who was attending one of the most prestigious public high schools in America. Hearing that I wrote a book on Thanksgiving, he started, he said, oh, that's the holiday that we celebrate of, uh, for murdering all the Indians. Uh -huh. And, you know, what I a thought, prestigious high school. Uh, OK. Yeah. So who got it right? I'm Dave Rubin and joining me on this very special week is a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, author of Thanksgiving, the holiday at the heart of the American experience and the presenter in the PragerU video Lincoln and Thanksgiving. Melanie Kirkpatrick, welcome to the Rubin Report. It's wonderful to be with you, especially uh, on Thanksgiving week. It seemed like you were the person to talk to on Thanksgiving. I have a lot of questions about Thanksgiving. You're the, are you the preeminent Thanksgiving expert? In America? Well, uh, I, I, I don't want to sound immodest, but uh, perhaps so. <laughs> Pretty good. All right. So I have a lot of questions about tryptophan, but I think you mostly want to focus on uh, the history of Thanksgiving. Is that correct? Sounds like a good idea, though tryptophan has come up. Uh, you know, uh, it's uh, one of the reasons everybody loves Thanksgiving. It helps put you to sleep. <laughs> Puts you to sleep, you unbuckle the pants, you're good to go. All right, so let's talk because this actually is a very special Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving 2021. This is the 400th anniversary of Thanksgiving. I feel like a lot of people don't know that. So let's do a little 101. What happened 400 years ago back in 1621? The first thing I'll mention is that there are two uh, eyewitness accounts by pilgrims of the first Thanksgiving, and neither one of them uses the word Thanksgiving, uh, which is kind of interesting. That's been imposed on it over the centuries. The um, but it, it it meets with uh, it it dovetails with the pilgrims' idea of what a Thanksgiving is. It's a day for. Uh, expressing gratitude, it was always a religious holiday. But the the event of 1621 uh, was probably more of a harvest festival. But that doesn't mean we can't call it a Thanksgiving, because uh, if you read those two first-person accounts um, by Pilgrim Edwin, Edward Winslow and uh, William Bradford, the governor of Plymouth Colony, it, they present um, an event that was very much like the one we celebrate today, at least in spirit. The spirit of gratitude was at the forefront. It was the spirit of amity with the uh, Native Americans. Uh, it was a time of uh, sharing. It was a time of fellowship. Uh, and it was a time of peace. And one of the things I object to is the um, modern day progressive 
um, interpretation of that day as the beginning of a, um, per a period, you know, the, the destruction of the Native American peoples. And that's completely wrong because, uh, if anything, the first Thanksgiving points the way to the multicultural people we have become because the Native Americans and the Indians were celebrating together peacefully and in harmony. Yeah, so it's hard for a lot of people to believe that, and I don't want to dwell on it because it's not true. You discuss it in the book, you discuss it in the PragerU video, but can you just, just for another minute or two, just explore that a little bit, that you know, people have this idea that they were, they were just there to kill each other or whatever it is, whatever the modern version of all this is, but really 400 years ago, the Native Americans and the pilgrims were sitting down and they were saying, hey, we can be thankful together on this land peacefully together. Yes, yes, they were. And um, the pilgrims had a lot to be thankful for, for the, uh, the assistance of the Native Americans. They would not have, they probably would not have survived had they not received the instruction from the Native Americans on how to plant, where to find good hunting grounds and good fishing waters. So, uh, and, and they knew it. They, uh, there were 52 pilgrims present at that first Thanksgiving. And um, most of that, only about half of them were men. And yet there were 90 uh, Indian uh, warriors present. So you can see why they might have been a little wary. And that was probably one reason that they decided to um, have a, um, a, a, um, a a shooting presentation. They showed the Native Americans, you know, how, you know, their guns and how they could use them. And it might have been in part a warning. But at the same time, um, they were very grateful for the help of the Native Americans that made it possible for them to survive. So you tell the story of Thanksgiving because it didn't, it didn't exactly become a holiday right then and there, that there are two sort of people that were integral to the story of Thanksgiving. One of the people we know well, one we don't know as well, although you just wrote a book, I believe, about the second person. So tell us about those two people. Oh, the first one is President Lincoln. And the second is Sarah Josepha Hale. And the link, the link between the two of them is Thanksgiving. Hale was um, the most influential woman of the 19th century. She was editor of Godey's Ladies Book uh, for 50 years. And this was one of the most uh, widely read and widely circulated magazines in the uh, 19th century. And it's kind of an amazing story of how a, um, a widow with fi five small children rose to such an exalted position. But she did. And uh, she was very keen on using, uh, well, let me back up. She was born in 1788. And she believed that um, while America had been unified politically through the revolution, it was not unified culturally. And she set out to help do that in her magazines. She um, published American authors writing on American subjects, which seems unusual from the point of view of the 21st century. But back then, it was commonplace for publications to uh, steal articles from Britain or other publications and republish them without credit in their own publication. But she had a different vision for her magazine. She wanted to have a focus on America and a focus on American authors. So she published uh, such authors as uh, Edgar Allan Poe and Harriet, the young Harriet Beecher Stowe and many, many others. But uh, the idea of Thanksgiving was uh, part of her vision of um, Ameri creating an American culture. Thanksgiving was very popular in New England, of course, and she had grown up loving the holiday. There were Thanksgiving celebrated in the other states and territories as well, but the uh, they were um, the governors of the states didn't coordinate on the holiday. Each was, and sometimes some states didn't bother to celebrate at all. 
So you had a situation, for example, in 1837, Hale was living in Boston, which celebrated on one day. She was from New Hampshire, which celebrated on another day. And her magazine was headquartered in uh, Philadelphia, and Pennsylvania wasn't celebrating at all that year. So her vision was uh, to have Americans celebrate on the same day every year. She thought that giving thanks, uh, the the idea of giving, coming together to give thanks, um, uh, as um, as a nation, would um, help. Um, she ha- it had a higher moral principle. She believed, and that it would bring the country together in a positive way. And as the country moved closer to civil war, she hoped that it would prevent uh, that war. Obviously, she didn't succeed, but in 1863, President Lincoln took up her idea, which had been rejected by four previous presidents, and uh, decided to call a national Thanksgiving. So basically, it took over 200 years of sort of a mismatch of, you know, who's doing it, when are they doing it, why are they doing it? And then finally, Lincoln said, okay, we're all going to do it. And then did everyone kind of fall in place? And immediately Ah, say, let's do it. uh, uh, The South didn't want to listen to Lincoln during the Civil War, of course. But the Union uh, rallied very positively to to his call. And after the war, um, the the Southern states um, slowly, you know, one by one came together as well on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. One of the things you mentioned in the PragerU video is that the people were actually eating the same stuff in many cases that we eat now. I mean, it it, it was turkey and and pumpkin pie, which is sort of, it's fun that we're still eating the same stuff a couple hundred years Yeah, it is. And you know, that goes back much farther than uh, 1863. Uh, In the 1800s, I found uh, many examples of uh, turkey and pumpkin pie uh, appearing on Thanksgiving menus. So, and those, uh, you know, were native um, to the country and so to North America, at least. So it's not surprising. There have been many changes in the menu over the years, too. Um, For example, in New England, uh, chicken pot pie was a standard feature of the Thanksgiving buffet. Uh, Venison also appeared on uh, a lot of uh, Thanksgiving tables. And the tradition of pies was uh, you didn't have just one. You had an array, a big selection of pies uh, at the time. So, uh, but from the beginning, I think Thanksgiving has been a feast. And that certainly is true today. Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to focus on the, the cancel culture aspect of this. We did a show on Christopher Columbus a couple months ago, and I try not to focus on all of that stuff. However, this is now a holiday that is so, sort of under attack. It represents the, the goodness of America and all the good things that we should be thankful for. And there's an awful lot of people that, that aren't thankful for these days uh, or aren't thankful for everything we have these days. What can we do to, to push back on that? Well, we can uh, learn the history of the holiday, uh, for one thing. Um, the, the teaching of the holiday has has um, been poor over the years. Um, Native Americans understandably object to uh, what, uh, at least when I was growing up, the, the focus on uh, the generosity of the pilgrims rather than on the generosity and assistance of the Native Americans. So we can get that right in teaching children about the holiday. Um, I also think we can um, uh, 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 listen to immigrants when it comes to their understanding of the holiday. The Thanksgiving is a rite of passage for most immigrants to America. It's part of joining the American family. This is a very positive thing. And um, in the research for this book, I spoke to uh, uh, teenagers at Newcomers High School in New York City, which is a high school for immigrants who have just arrived. And most of the kids I talked to were going to celebrate their first Thanksgiving in just a few weeks. And their, um, their enthusiasm for the holiday was um, was very it, it affected me very profoundly. They identified with the pilgrims. Now 
um, let me give you a couple of examples. One, um, a boy who identified as a Tibetan, although that country hasn't existed since China uh, uh, took, took it over in 1950. Uh, he said he was a pilgrim. Why? Because his family, like the pilgrims, came to America to practice their religion. In China, he said, he couldn't practice the Tibetan Buddhism of the Dalai Lama. Then a little girl spoke up and she said, oh, that's like my family. We came here from Egypt because we're cops and cops are an early uh, version of Christianity, an early sect of Christianity. So these kids uh, really got it. And um, then um, uh, a week or two later, uh, after Thanksgiving, um, I went to a Hanukkah party of, of um, a group from my uh, husband's family. And I met a kid who was attending one of the most prestigious public high schools in America. Hearing that I wrote a book on Thanksgiving, he started, he said, oh, that's the holiday that we celebrate of, uh, for murdering all the Indians. Yeah. And, you know, I the prestigious thought, high school. Uh, OK. Yeah. So who got it right? So education is is one thing. And uh, let me end on a positive note here, though. Um, you know, uh, yes, progressives are out to cancel Thanksgiving, um, but I don't think they have a hope of success because Americans like this holiday so much. And even if they don't uh, fully grasp the history of it, or even if they pay lip service to uh, the cancel culture, uh, they're not going to stop celebrating Thanksgiving. And also, I think a lot of the very positive aspects of Thanksgiving are going to continue. Families are going to come together. Uh, Americans have a tradition of inviting people who have no place to go for Thanksgiving. And most of all, um, I love the idea of Thanksgiving generosity, which um, the idea that uh, Thanksgiving is a holiday when we think carefully about those who are less fortunate among us. And you think of all the nonprofits, all the non-religious, all the religious organizations, and also all the individuals who make sure that people who are in jail, people who are in hospital, and people who have um, no family all have an opportunity to have a good Thanksgiving dinner. And this is, um, this is a real hallmark of the holiday and of American generosity. Yeah, and I have to say that, you know, over the last couple of years, as, as some of our freedoms have felt like they're disappearing or at least being challenged in very bizarre ways, I've definitely become more appreciative. I've always loved Thanksgiving because of the food mm -hmm. and, the, and the smells and the people and the family and all that. You mentioned at the beginning that this was really thought of as a religious holiday at first, which is sort of uh, not the way I think most people think of it because they think of it sort of as our main secular holiday in America. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think a better way to think of it, Dave, is that it is um, um, the only holiday probably anywhere in the world that is open to all religions and to none. So it's, um, you know, doesn't matter what your religion is, doesn't matter uh, where you came from. This is every Amer it is every American's holiday. So, uh, yeah, it used to be, even when I was growing up, that uh, people went to church, uh, you know, the night before Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving morning. That doesn't happen very much anymore. But if there is a day that a family says grace before a meal, it is Thanksgiving Day. Yeah. So you mentioned before that uh, Abraham Lincoln, obviously, first we have the Civil War. So now he's got to get the, the South to kind of come on board all of this, was was everybody immediately celebrating Thanksgiving after or did it really take some time? It, it, it took a while. I, I, I don't recall off the top of my head the dates when uh, Southern states individually began to celebrate, but um, certainly by the end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century, it was a unit, there, there was unity in the states. And let me tell you a funny story about what happened um, in the 1930s. 
during the Depression, uh, FDR had the dumb idea that if he moved the date of Thanksgiving to allow more time between Thanksgiving Day and Christmas, America, it would help the economy. His theory was that uh, Americans would have more days to go Christmas shopping, and that would be a boost to the holiday. Well, I think Americans would have liked to spend more money on Christmas presents, but they didn't have the money. Right. So the idea flopped. But um, And for three, three days, though, Americans uh, had to either celebrate on the new day, which was a week earlier than the traditional date, or um, celebrate on the traditional date. And the country was split about 50-50. Um, and uh, the holiday began known as became known as the Democratic Thanksgiving and the Republican <laughs> Thanksgiving, which was very funny. But uh, there were a few states that had the best idea of all. They celebrated on both days. And I know Texas and Colorado were among them. I've forgotten what the third is. Um, but... Uh, and then in 1941, it was clear that Roosevelt's idea for a, a, a new date for Thanksgiving was a flop, and Congress finally acted and passed a resolution naming the fourth Thursday of, thanks, of November as uh, the official Thanksgiving date. And finally, uh, Thanksgiving uh, was written into law, and we've celebrated on that date ever since. As a Thanksgiving historian, does it madden you that Friday after Thanksgiving has now become Black Friday, which is now leaking into Thanksgiving? I mean, the new thing is now that the store is open actually on Thanksgiving Day, the one day we're supposed to set aside to be thankful yeah. and we've allowed it to become yeah. this sort of commercial madness. Yeah, I don't like the leakage into Thanksgiving Thursday, I, I say, but I like, I, I don't mind Black Friday. Uh, I think it's actually a, a sign of the health of our economy, the prosperity of the American people, and we should give thanks. We should pay thanks, give thanks for that. How did football? Also, how did, oh, go ahead. Well, football. Yeah. <laughs> what about football? Yeah, how did football well, become a part of this whole thing? I thought football was yeah. supposed to be on Sundays. Well, uh, I, uh, uh, I am not a fan of football, and this was the hardest chapter for me <laughs> to write. Uh, but uh, I had a lot, you know, I did a lot of research and I, I got it. Um, as you may recall, the, the first American football game was played by Princeton and Rutgers in uh, 1869. And then in the 70s, um, Princeton, which is my alma mater, uh, I will uh, say, um, uh, and Yale played a Thanksgiving Day on play a Thanksgiving Day football game. It was their championship game. That moved to New York City in the late 1870s or, or around 1880, and New Yorkers took it up. Even if they couldn't go to the game, they uh, came out in force walking the streets. They would go up and down Fifth, Fifth Avenue wearing orange and black for, Pris for Princeton or blue for Yale. Uh, and they really adopted this football championship game in a big way. And of course, New Yorkers have always been trendsetters and the rest of the country began to take up the idea of Thanksgiving Day football. A lot of um, towns would have, high, town high schools would have their championship game on Thanksgiving morning and then go home for, for dinner. Um, and then uh, I guess some people um, had the idea in the early 20th century that uh, this would be good for pro football, too. And the Detroit Ch Tigers were the first team to play a, a Thanksgiving Day uh, game, which they, of course, still play. Uh, and then the Dallas Cowboys took it up at some point. Um, and now there's a third team, which I think changes every year, that, uh, that plays. But um, Thanksgiving football was controversial in the 19th century. Um, ministers and rabbis and others complained that uh, it took, it diverted attention from the mm -hmm. true meaning of the day. But, uh, you know, uh, I, I think we can have turkey and thanks and football and gratitude all in the same day. We can multitask. Right, Americans right. are good at that. Although I'm sure there, there were some people, of course, that probably felt that people shouldn't be, you know, 
forced to work that day or that sort of thing too. Yeah. Uh, but you think right. we can fit all the things. What are some of the crazier traditions you've heard? I assume that there's all sorts of different uh, Thanksgiving traditions all over the country. Gosh, yeah, there are. But, you know, the meal is the number one, um, is the number one tradition. And um, Sarah Josepha Hale, whom I mentioned as the, the godmother of the modern day Thanksgiving, um, uh, used, uh, the, she was the first one to bring recipes, to put recipes in a magazine or, or newspaper to create a recipe section. And she published lots of uh, recipes culled from around the country uh, for Thanksgiving Day feasts. And, um, uh, you know, you hear, I heard of some crazy pies like sweet potato pie. I had never heard of that, but apparently it's popular in the South. And um, there's a pie called Marlboro pie, which is a kind of apple lemon pie, which was very popular in the 19th century. Um, but crazy customs. A lot of people go, this isn't, this isn't crazy, but a lot of people go around the table and ask uh, uh, every individual uh, to say something that he is yeah, grateful we do that. for. We do that. Um, other families read, uh, uh, find something to read about Thanksgiving for um, the the family table, and um, I actually at the back of my Thanksgiving book include readings for Thanksgiving Day, and they're short, very short readings from over four hundred years of American history about Thanksgiving. And then there's a custom that my family has adopted. Um, I won't call it a crazy custom, but it's a different custom. It's called Five Kernels of Corn, and it uh, dates back to the late 19th centuries. Of um, People would put five kernels of dried corn on their table, and the corn represented um, the generosity of the native people who taught the pilgrims how to grow corn, and it also represented the starving time of the Plymouth of the pilgrims in Plymouth Colony, when they, um, so by leg legend says, were given only five kernels of corn to eat every day. So um, I like that. I yeah. like that idea. Five kernels of corn. How, how does our Thanksgiving, some of the traditions, the foods, all that compare? You know, like we just uh, had Canadian Thanksgiving was a couple of weeks ago. I assume other countries have some version, maybe not called Thanksgiving, but, you know, sort of a more secular day of thanks type of thing. Well, most of the uh, Thanksgivings uh, around the world are religious in nature, um, or at least originated as such. China has a kind of Thanksgiving. It's more of a harvest festival. Um, so does uh, uh, the, the two. So do the two Koreas. Brazil um, has a Thanksgiving that is modeled on the American Thanksgiving. The ambassador from Brazil to America in the late 1940s loved Thanksgiving, and so. So uh, he uh, went home and took it with him to huh. Brazil, and they huh. now have such a holiday. Uh, and Canada's holiday is interesting. It um, It's on our Columbus Day weekend, and uh, it's, uh, it, uh, the, the idea of celebrating Thanksgiving was carried from, by carried to Canada by British loyalists who, American loyalists, excuse me, who fled during the revolution to usually Nova Scotia. And um, because there was a close tie between Boston and uh, Halifax at the time. And they took the holiday with them and it spread around uh, the country of Canada. It doesn't have the same meaning for Canadians, though, that it has for Americans, because it's not it doesn't have an association with anything in the Canadian history. So it's uh, while Canadians enjoy the day and uh, have a meal, a hard harvest meal that's similar to ours, um, uh, they don't feel the connection to it that, that we feel. Interesting. So it really was an export from us to them yeah. in that sense. Yeah, yeah, huh. yeah. Interesting. So, what else What uh, else do people need to know on this Thanksgiving before I let them dive into their turkey and stuffing <laughs> and all that good stuff, their sweet potato pie? 
Well, I'd, I, in response to your comment about uh, your question about Black Friday, I also wanted to mention Giving Tuesday, which you may have heard of. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's a new, a relatively new um, uh, uh, campaign, which is start was originally organized by the. Um, Ninety uh, Second Street Y in New York City, which um, is um, a has Jewish roots, and the idea was to set up online opportunities for people to uh, donate to their favorite uh, nonprofits and charities. It's been very successful. It's um, uh, raised million. It raises millions and millions of dollars every year, wow. and I love the idea that G- uh, Giving Tuesday is uh, connected originally to our Thanksgiving Day. Do you know the actual website we can send people to? We'll find it if not. Uh, well, I don't. You, I, I believe the way it works is that um, uh, you go. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah, see if you can find a link. Well, that do, would be great. Well, I'm guessing there's a Giving Tuesday website, but if not, obviously on that the, Tuesday be, before Thanksgiving, be. you can you can donate to wherever you'd like. Well, we're going to link to the PragerU video down below. We're going to link to the book, which I've got right here. And uh, I've enjoyed this talk, and I can very simply say happy Thanksgiving to you. And back to you, Dave. I wish you and your family a very happy Thanksgiving. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about academia instead of nonstop yelling, check out our academia playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist. They're all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.